Hello and welcome to UKFitnessHub.com. My name's Travis Tarrant and in today's video, we're gonna be talking all about snapping tricep syndrome. We're gonna be going through what it is, what the causes are of snapping tricep syndrome, the surgery, and also what you can do post-surgery to recover as quickly as possible. Let's get into the video. So the tricep muscle is a large muscle at the back of the arm and its whole responsibility is to extend the elbow at the elbow joint. So if this is flexion, where the bicep at the front of the arm would work, this would be extension, so extending the elbow out. What we're particularly interested in with snapping tricep syndrome is the tricep tendon. So a tendon simply is something that attaches muscle to bone. So in this case, you've got the muscle that comes down in like a horseshoe shape. You've got a lateral side, three heads of the tricep because it's tri meaning three and seps meaning heads. And all of the heads attach then via the way of a tendon onto the posterior olecranon process. So I'm going to use here as an example, this theraband being the tricep and the bottom of it being the tricep tendon. So remember the tricep tendon or the theraband in this case is attaching to the posterior part of the olecranon process. And someone with snapping tricep syndrome will essentially have a part of this tendon which is detached from the rest of the tendon. So this is a free piece of tendon that isn't attached to the main body, it's broken apart. So what then happens is as that individual bends their elbow, as opposed to everything being neatly tucked into that olecranon process, there'll be a rogue part of tendon which will flip over the medial epicondyle and then cause a pop and a click sensation. So this is the inner elbow and there'll be a part of the tendon that will flip from this groove over and then that's what gives that clicking and popping sensation. Something that's happened twice in my career when I've been rehabilitating ulnar nerve transposition surgeries is that someone's come to me, um, they've been maybe to a doctor before, they've got this snapping over the medial epicondyle, they don't know what it is, and they've, they've said, look, I want surgery to correct it. A orthopedic surgeon or somebody has said, oh, that's your ulnar nerve because it sits within the ulnar tunnel and it's flicking over the medial epicondyle. They've then had that surgery to pop the nerve from the ulnar nerve groove all the way to the front of the forearm, so from here to there. And then post rehab, it's still clicking exactly the same way that it was pre-surgery. They've then gone back in for a second surgery thinking the ulnar nerve transposition hadn't worked and actually it was the tricep tendon in the first place. They never needed to have anything done to the ulnar nerve. It was actually the tricep tendon broken away from the olecranon process and flipping over the medial epicondyle. So be careful for that if you do opt for surgery. Do make sure that it is absolutely 100% the tricep tendon and not the ulnar nerve and vice versa. How I would test this out if I had an individual with a popping, uh, so a popping or grating sensation at the elbow joint, especially medial, is I would make sure that I flex the elbow until they get the pop sensation. And once they've experienced the pop where they've felt whatever it is slide over the medial epicondyle, I would then come in and start flicking the area. Now, if they start to experience substantial pins and needles, the likelihood is it's the ulnar nerve. And if they don't experience pins and needles, the likelihood is that it's actually the tricep tendon. So again, I would take an individual, I would get them to bend, wait for that pop that they're experiencing at the elbow. So what should happen with the pop is it should pass over medial epicondyle, I start flicking. If they get maybe a one or two out of 10 in terms of sensation, then I know that's not the ulnar nerve. They start getting an absolutely eight out of 10, nine out of 10 sensation, then the likelihood is the ulnar nerve that's passing over. But it's always good to make sure what it is as opposed to having to be unlucky and have two to three surgeries. And as I say, it's really commonly misdiagnosed. When I have individuals in with a true case of snapping tricep syndrome, they generally ask me two questions. And the first question is, is there anything I can do which doesn't involve surgery? And most of the case people that come in, they've got this snapping over the medial epicondyle, but it doesn't really bother them, it's just an annoyance. And if they're not at a high level of sport or 
They've not got a massive frustration at the elbow, it's just something they maybe wanted to have diagnosed. Then that's the individual I wouldn't say to actually have surgery. And that really is the only option with a part of the tricep tendon that's actually broken away is to surgically remove it. The tricep tendon will still be as strong. For some individuals, I've had a massive clonk that occurs when they bend their arm. So they've not only just got a little tiny bit of tricep tendon, they've got a really big part that's kind of clonking over. And in these individuals, they might be repetitive throwing athletes where they've just had trauma to the elbow through velocity of throwing. A lot of bodybuilders tend to have this as well, where they're putting lots of shear force through the tricep tendon and it's broken away. But it depends on the individual as to whether they need surgery and whatever they do is is the problem that is at the elbow that snapping and grating and popping sensation bad enough to warrant having surgery now that's question number one and question number two is how do i get my tricep tendon fixed once i've had surgery so how do i rehabilitate it in the best way possible and that is what i'm going to cover in the next part of this video after tricep tendon excision surgery what will tend to happen is the elbow can get really inflamed and sore um, typically there's a lot of inflammation and there's a lot of swelling and what i'm looking for really with somebody that's had that surgery is for a four to five week recovery max and we need to make sure that we allow that inflammation and that soreness and tightness of the elbow to settle before we start to actually go into any movements to rehab so for the first five days, all I'd focus on is rest, recovery. Your body has gone through some major trauma. There has been skin, soft tissue that's been cut into. So just allow the body to go through its natural first stage of recovery. Once you get to day five, you may be in a sling if you're, you've had this surgery. And I want you to start to come out of the sling and start to do passive elbow flexion and extension. So what this means is Passive is where I completely have my arm dead and I'm moving the arm, but this arm is doing no work. All the work is coming from my non-operated arm and I'm just starting to get some range of motion through the joint without actually stressing the muscles or the elbow joint by having and contracting my bicep and tricep when I'm extending and flexing. It's actually just the joint that gets some movement so we can get some flow through the joint and start to aid the healing process. That's the first thing that I'd want you to do for one minute, three times a day from day five post-surgery. At day 10 post-surgery, I want you to start using your arm independently. So stop with the passive range of motion and now start to use active range of motion. If you get to a certain point where you start to feel really stiff and you still can't access your full range of motion, just work within the boundaries that you can do and what is comfortable for you. And then once we get to day 14, we're gonna to start to add in, and this is a great one to do if you're at home and you don't have access to a gym, a TheraBand tricep extension. So I'm extending the elbow, extending my tricep, and allowing that to contract and work, and I'm starting to strengthen up those tissues that have previously been damaged post-surgery. So we will start to get that tendon active and strengthened up again. Now with both of those exercises, the first one we mentioned, this one would be exactly the same as what you did firstly, you're just swapping it out three times over one minute a day. So you'd stop with the passive, go to active. And at day 14, you add this one in, and this would be two sets of 15 repetitions. If it's too easy, there's lots of different TheraBands that you can use, all of different resistances. So this one is a light one that I'm using here. So what you can then do is go to a medium or a heavy one based on how you feel with this movement. If you don't have a TheraBand, but you do have access to a gym, this would be the perfect time to get onto a cable machine. You wanna make sure that you've got a single attachment. So take anything that's on the cable machine off and all we're looking for is to just have this part, okay? So nothing on it at all. Set the weight to as low as possible to begin with. And then once you've done that, what I want you to do is pop the machine at shoulder height, okay? So that's the first kind of tool and trick. Make sure there's not a load of weight on that you're gonna surprise yourself. Shoulder height, 
Now, once you've got it at shoulder height, you're gonna grab like so, and you are going to extend down, slowly come back up, keeping your elbow into your body, and repeating for two sets of 15 repetitions. Now, you can do this every day. Don't wanna do more than two sets of 15, but if it's too easy, you just pop the weight up. We're not looking to use any attachments on this one, so you don't need any. And this would be done every single day. At week three, we can be a little bit more ambitious and progressive. So with people that have tricep injuries, especially athletes that want to throw overhead, they need to have the strength in that range of motion. So what we're gonna do is I'm gonna give you two examples. One if you have a gym and one if you don't. If you have a gym, you're gonna take again the cable machine with no attachment on. You're gonna do two sets of 15, same as before, but you're gonna swap out the last exercise for a full range overhead tricep extension. So we're doing one side here. I'm coming all the way back as far as my elbow allows. If I come too far, my shoulder will start to do the work. So I wanna keep my arm completely bolted into this position and make sure that I'm not extending from shoulder as well as elbow. Now it's all well and good if you have the cable machine, but if you don't, you use the TheraBand, again wrapped around something that's not gonna move and two sets of 15 exactly like this one. And you do exactly the same, you extend from the elbow, release slowly back in, extend from the elbow, release slowly back in. You may decide at this point that you still wanna do it every day. I'd probably start to get people doing it every other day because they're starting to get that strength back into the uh, elbow joint. They're probably gonna to wanna to go heavier at this stage and that's why it's important not to overload. The last exercise that I'm gonna be showing you is tricep kickbacks. So this is typically the last exercise just because we need a good amount of strength in the tricep by this point. People probably wanna go quite heavy but we've got to make sure that we get the form and control of the movement and that's more important than the weight you pick. I've got the two kilo purely for demonstration purposes. You could use something like a hammer or anything with any weight that you're going to find challenging between rep 10 and 15. You shouldn't be finding this hard straight away. You might have a little bit of wobbling at the elbow, which is fine, but you shouldn't get fatigued straight away. Otherwise, that would be an indication that it's too um, harsh on the actual weight that you've chosen. Again, we've got two sets of 15, and how we're going to do it is I'm going to bring my elbow into my side. I'm then going to extend the elbow slowly back and then back to my start position without swinging the weight. I wanna keep that elbow completely locked into my side, into my rib cage. And once I've completed the two sets of 15, that would be this exercise done. When we start to get to this point where we're doing our last exercise, we really should be bringing the loading down on the triceps maybe once or twice a week. You can still do all the exercises previously mentioned, so you might decide to do them all on one day. It would be really not worthwhile or no additional benefit to start doing them all back to back every single day, because at this point we've got the strength back, there's no need to strengthen that tendon, and we don't want to create a tendon where we're doing really heavy motions all the time, and we start to get something like a repetitive strain injury like tendonitis. So just be careful with what you do. A couple of times a week at this point, maximum of three, minimum of one. You can put all the exercises together. Uh, at this stage of your rehab, you should pretty much nearly be there, if not fully recovered. And that concludes the end of today's video on snapping tricep syndrome. I hope this video has been of use to you. And if you want the links to the TheraBands or the lightweights that I use in this video, be sure to check the description and I'll put the links just there. If you've learned something new or you've enjoyed the video, make sure to like and subscribe for more free and educational content. And of course, you've been watching UK Fitness Hub. I've been Travis Tarrant and I'll see you in the next video.